Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a fascinating morning, don't you think? Uh, do prize winners live longer? And why scientifically might we care whether or not they do? This is joint work with a young British researcher called Matthew Rayburn. And a key stimulus for our paper was an article published a little bit over a decade ago in the Annals of Internal Medicine in 2001 by Redelmeyer and Singh. Those authors made the, the fascinating but provocative claim that winning an Oscar would, if you can manage it, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> would increase the length of your life by just under four years in a causal sense remarkably compared merely to being nominated. <laughs> so what about the effect of other kinds of awards? Uh, I must say when we began this work I was skeptical that we would find any effect from winning either, even a major award and I, I worried about some of the uh, st statistical structures in the Redelmeyer and Singh paper but we'll come back to that. Uh, Matthew and I collected data anyway, went ahead on half a century of Nobel Prize winners in chemistry and physics. Uh, these individuals were born on average in around 1870. That gave us a usable sample of about 135, yes, 100, 135 winners and a little bit under 400 nominees. Where when I say a nominee here, I'll mean someone who was nominated but did not win. This is not a large sample by my kind of world, but it's a start. If you look at the raw data, this is what you find. And it's true, these are, these are remarkably long-lived individuals, considering they were born in the year 1870. You think about it. Uh, it's true that winners live a year or two longer than nominees. Uh, but these are just averages. Uh, we, we can't read any kind of causality from uh, these numbers, and Redelmeyer and Singh wouldn't have said that either. The literature that's pursued this line has done various kinds of corrections to try to get closer to cause and effect. The notion here is that we can think about status as being randomly assigned at the margin among a group of people otherwise very similar in characteristics. And one underlying theory is that if you have status or perhaps happiness showered upon you in an outside way, what a researcher might call an exogenous way, perhaps in some mysterious fashion that would be protective for your physical system, for your health. So we constructed a matching test pairing each winner with uh, a nominee closest in characteristics. I cannot tell you the methods today. And also a regression equation test looking at the same uh, kind of issue. Setting a somewhat higher statistical bar than and perhaps Redelmeyer and Singh say it. Intuitively, what we're doing here is we're comparing the longevity of winners against nominees, conditional on the nominee being alive, of course, at the time the winner won. That's the only way to get the appropriate test. Our results, against my early guesses, continue to find evidence, statistically significant evidence, consistent with the notion that winning the prize would raise your lifespan, not by 3.6 years, only a year or two, but uh, this is how the data came out and of course we reported these results uh, a little while ago in a published paper. This ties into a broader literature which some in the room may know about. We're gathering evidence that there are profound links between how your mind works, perhaps one might say your mental well-being and how your, your body uh, functions, how, how healthy your system is. If you read journals called psychoneuroendocrinology, then you'll run into the work of people like Weinman at uh, London doing very interesting work, taking bits of flesh out of people like you. I don't know what they have to pay their volunteers. The wounds inflicted in that way are then, the rate of healing is then measured compared to um, adults of the same kind. And this is how the technical jargon comes out, but in everyday English, Weinman's team shows there's a literature showing that happier people heal up faster if they have standardised size puncture wounds. There's a concept, standardised size puncture wounds. Some of you will know the Cohen studies from Carnegie Mellon, which are also in the same vein. There's also some evidence that happiness, if you can manage it, ladies and gentlemen, uh, 
will make you live longer. There is some evidence. One of the early studies was a, a study of a group of nuns. Some of them are still living, N-U-N-S. And uh, this is now famous in the applied psychology literature and part of be the behavioral science literature because these nuns recorded their early emotions in their teens. They, their diaries have been kept and it has transpired against, I think, what I would have predicted and perhaps what you would have predicted, that the emotional words in the diaries when these youngsters were in their teens has turned out to be remarkably predictive of how long each individual lives. This has the advantage, compared to studying Oscar winners, that I'm afraid a very large proportion of these nuns, like chemists and physicists from my era, have died, which is very useful if you're studying lifespan. <laughs> Formally, uh, we find this kind of negative correlation. To sum up, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is true that Nobel Prize winners do live longer. Now, whenever you say such a thing, you have to decide longer against whom. But interestingly to me, and perhaps to you, they live longer than nominees, even when we do the most formal statistical corrections that so far the literature has been able to do. It is very widely thought, I'm sure you've heard it said, you may have said it, that a healthy body leads to a healthy mind. Part of my life's work is on looking at the structure of happiness equations or mental well-being equations and exercise hours and fruit and vegetable consumption and so on come in strongly, along with many other things, of course, in those happiness equations. It may be, uh, this literature suggests, that there's a, a kind of reverse causality, there's a two-way flow, and happiness and status may themselves be protective of the body. We certainly don't understand why or how, but it may be, they may be protective of the body. Let me stress the word may, in that sentence because, like the benefits of the French Revolution, it's just a little bit too early to say. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. I've